Hey, church family. Uh, we're just carrying on tonight with this whole reboot, reset kind of uh, thought and theme. And uh, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about finances tonight. And I know that there has been a number of people speaking to me about the concern economically in the world today, the concern that we have. I know that in the last three weeks, we've had the largest uh, amount of people go on EI in the history of Canada since the Great Depression. And those numbers are going to surpass them most likely very soon, if they haven't already. Um, and so finances is something that's on a lot of people's minds. And I believe right along with our spiritual life, with our spiritual foundations and uh, our families, that God is also hitting the reset button on finances and on the way that we think about finances. And so I want to read from you, uh, read for you tonight a couple of uh, verses in found in the, the Gospel of Matthew, and I'm going to kind of land and camp in chapter six. And there's a, a lot of really, really cool nuggets here uh, that we can kind of glean and gather from Jesus himself. So it starts in verse 19, Matthew chapter 6, and he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, this is, I love this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So he's basically saying, here's God's reset button or reboot for financial decision making. This is it. Verse 21 of Matthew chapter 6, where your treasure is, in other words, where your financial focus is, that's where your heart is. In other words, if you want to know 100% without, without missing it in any way and have 100% accuracy on where your heart is, look at where you spend your money, right? So think about this in the context of what we've been going through for the last three weeks. I don't know about you, but we have reevaluated where we're spending our money a lot in the last three, four weeks. Those things that we would normally just run out and pick up because we can, we don't do. Those things that we feel like we could just swing by Best Buy on the way home from work because they have that thing on sale suddenly is not important. I thought about this the other day when we went shopping, um, grocery shopping, which we now took two and a half weeks between grocery shopping time. So two and a half weeks later, we went grocery shopping. And it made us think when we went grocery shopping two and a half weeks ago, when we went to the store, we were thinking through exactly what we needed, not what we wanted. We were thinking through exactly what we would need to make meals so that we could be okay and make sure that all seven of us are fed as long as possible. Well, the other dynamic was, is we also thought about how much can we buy in one setting so we don't have to come back. So we now know that part of that's because of the coronavirus, but part of that is actually kind of calling back for some of the old days where you'd only go to the store once a week, you'd only watch cartoons once a week, you'd only do everything once a week, and you wouldn't go out of your way to do too much uh, other things. So convenience has actually created financial stress because of the availability of what's there. So instead of actually patterning, patterning ourselves and disciplining ourselves as to getting one thing once a week. So here's what hit me as I was thinking about getting groceries once every two weeks. It's a couple of things that happened. Number one, I've had a lot more family time. Number two, I've done a lot more physical activity. Number three, I've, I've spent less in gas money. As a matter of fact, my car is still on full when I filled it up three and a half weeks ago. It hasn't budged. Four, I'm actually saving the environment because I'm not putting gas emissions into the air by driving out 20 times a day when I don't even need to do it. So think about this. There's a, a domino effect financially of the decisions that we make. Whenever something is available, it means we have that option. Right now, we don't have options. Therefore, it forces us to make better financial decisions, right? Makes sense. If you jump down to verse 24, it says kind of in, in alignment with this thought, it says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And the actual kind of Greek translation for that is riches or wealth or resources is one other translation of it. But what's interesting here is Jesus actually doesn't call it a thing. He calls it a spirit. Okay, wow, now that just changed the rules of the game. He's not calling it something 
that is just an inanimate object, he's actually calling it a spirit. And he's not calling it an angelic spirit, he's actually calling it a demonic spirit. Why does he back up three verses earlier and say, I want to hit the reboot button on the way you see finances, where your treasure is there, your heart is. Why is this important? Because if you don't hit the reset button on your financial decisions, you're going to get to verse 24 and you're going to have constant conflict between the spirit of generosity and the spirit of man. How do I know that to be true? We'll back up to the two verses previous. Verse 22 and verse 23 says this, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And he's basically saying the spirit of mammon plays off your eyes. Why? Because it is the gateway to your soul. What's in your soul? Your mind, your will, and emotions. If it can, if your eyes can influence your emotions, it will influence how you think and change your will. But if you actually go back up another verse to 21 and you respond to the Jesus reboot button, you'll realize that what he's saying is put your value in things that are eternal. Put your value in things that actually make a difference, that actually matter, Okay. Because if you don't, your eye will be duped or deceived into thinking that you need something. And actually, it's not an object that's playing on your soul. It's actually a spirit called mammon that is actually deceiving you into thinking that you need something. When, when we are satisfied in Christ, we don't need anything, but we get to give, we get to live, and we get to save based upon the principles of purity and trust in Christ. How do I know this to be true? Because in verse 25, right down to verse 33, he actually talks about, don't worry about your life. Is life uh, more than food and the body more than clothing? And I want you to catch this one verse in verse uh, 26 here. It says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So we have to understand right now, church, that there's value not just in the thing. Jesus actually is saying that there's value in you and in your relationship with God. And so it's out of that place that financial freedom actually happens. You're not tied in to the influence of the spirit of mammon. And that is why he can go on and say, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Church, that is what this is all about. Hit the reset button on the way that you view finances. Do not give into the spirit of mammon, but actually give into the spirit of generosity, which is at the core of who Jesus is. For God so loved the world that he gave. That is what it's all about. Church, it's time to reboot our financial thinking. Bless you, church. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.